and he needed them all to beat tough Asif Dar. He never could put Dar away, but he pounded him over six rounds to win an impressive decision. He also went the route to beat Jose Avila, showing the good uppercut he'll also need in tonight's match. And if Tony's future looks good, the same could be said for 21-year-old Curtis Peoples, who also beat, guess who, Asif Dar. That was one of his nine wins. Curtis missed the 1988 Olympics, losing in the trials to Charles Murray. But he doesn't plan on missing the gold as a pro, and he'll face a big test tonight when he takes on Tony Marshall. And with that, Alec keys to victory. For Curtis Peoples, when I say sit down on the right hand, sometimes he doesn't throw with enough conviction. Get in close. He's a, a better inside fighter. For Tony Marshall, so fast. I think he needs to set a quick pace to, to, to get an early lead against Peoples. The uppercut could be very important. That's a punch that he has, and Peoples tends to get hit with it. So that's the way this fight shapes up. We're going eight rounds. These are welterweights, and you're going to hear from the winner, I promise. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Harris Atlantic City here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight Top Rank Incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. All these bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. And ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Top Rank Boxing and ESPN, we'd like to dedicate tonight's entire card of boxing to a gentleman who's a great fight fan and no longer with us. Mr. Lyle Alzado. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with an eight-round bout. This is in the welterweight division. The referee for this contest is Rudy Battle. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red and green trunks, and weighing in at an even 148 pounds, he's from Albany, New York, undefeated as a professional with a record of 7-0-1, oh, two knockouts to his credit, Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Marshall. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, weighing in at 147 pounds. He's from Palmer Park, Maryland. An excellent professional record of nine, one, and one. Three KOs to his credit, introducing Dynamite, Curtis Peoples. talk about the rules here in the state of New Jersey while we have a moment. Three knockdown rule. Uh, standing eight is also in effect. The doctor can stop the fight. The winner gets ten to lose or nine or less. The referee does not figure into the scoring. He cannot be saved by the belt in any round here. I was just kind of digging the band there. Here's a look at Tony Marshall. Tony undefeated at seven and oh. And in the other corner, Curtis Peoples. And Curtis does have one loss. He says he wants to make amends for that. He also says that it came at a higher weight and that he is much more comfortable at 147 pounds. Here we go, round one. He stepped up to uh, pick on Patrick Kahn. And his nickname, I remember, was Patrick Wrath of Kahn. That's right. Which probably was what tipped the, the tide to him. And uh, he, he did not uh, perform well enough that way so he's back down. I would be remiss. We talked to both fighters this morning about how they both uh, have sartorial splendor when they box. Very, almost clashing outfits because they're very similar. It's like two ladies that show up to a ball with the same dress. That's what we have here. Very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. A couple what? of fringe fighters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Luckily, they're not fringe fighters in their abilities. No, absolutely not. They are very, both these young men are very quick. They have quick hands. And I think if there's going to be a difference in this spot, it's going to be which one is going to land, simply is going to land with more power. Yeah, actually, I thought you made an interesting point in our conversations this morning with Curtis Peoples. You were talking to his manager, actually, it was his manager that made the good point, but off your good question, of he seems like he's stronger than he is, and his manager said. Yeah, well, you know, with Curtis Peoples, sometimes he doesn't get off quick enough. He punches, just delays a minute, and his power doesn't get a full impact in the punch. These guys are working very hard here in this first round. People's landing the jab much better than I think Tony Marshall thought he might. That's very important. And Marshall himself has gotten the uppercut in a couple times. Peoples has a good, strong jab. And your point is well taken. He does look like he's throwing harder punches than perhaps he is, although I think he got Marshall's attention with the left hand a moment ago. Curtis Peoples setting up the right hand with those jabs. Now, I thought Curtis Peoples would have to be on the inside to be effective against Marshall, but so far, from the outside, he's done pretty well. 
Does it surprise you there's a right hand behind the jab? He, he was setting that up punch up perfectly. Does it surprise you that these two are being allowed to face each other at this juncture in their career? In a certain way, yes, but you know what? It, honestly, you want to know the truth? I don't think, no matter what happens here, as long as they both perform well, neither really is a loser. I really believe that. In fact, Curtis Peoples talked about the one loss that he had to Khan, and he said, that's probably the best thing that's happened to me in my career. And you, you hear boxers say that all the time. He just reinforced things he knew he needed to do, needed to, do to get better. You know, they thought, Tony Marshall's people thought that Peoples would have to get inside his jab and he would be the one that would have to do it. Guess what? So far, Curtis Peoples is out jabbing Marshall. Big right. The jab really well. Good right hand just underneath. And a left hand. Boy, excellent round so far for Curtis Peoples. Really sharp. He may have surprised Marshall with his power so far here. Coming to the end of the first round, and boy, I'll tell you what, they came out of the gate at a sprint. Peoples landing this overhand right now. He slaps just a little bit with it, but still got it in there very nicely. And he landed 81% of his power shots in round one did Curtis Peoples. All based off that jab, which really was effective. They said an interesting thing to Curtis Peoples in his corner. They said, look, the overhand right is there. It's going to be there for you. I also want the left hook. And uh, that's a punch he also landed somewhat in the first round. Take a look at the numbers in the first round. You can see Peoples very effective with his punches. And you can see that Tony Marshall, even though his percentage connect wasn't great, was, was working a lot. A little bit deceiving, actually. I would have thought that Peoples threw as many punches as Marshall in that first He round. seemed to throw a lot, yeah, but I guess it's just because he was landing. Marshall with a very good right hand that caught people solidly but did not hurt him at all. Both of these guys in their previous fights has gotten stronger as the fight has gone on. Marshall had to suck it up to beat Yassif Dar. Of course, that is their common opponent. Curtis Peoples also beating Dar. Peoples having to make as much of a comeback as he could against Khan before losing that fight. Out of left hand by Peoples. Curtis Peoples is getting the left hook in a little bit more. That may be as important to him as the right, and they, that may be why the man is people getting good advice. And there it is again from Peoples. I believe also, though, Barry, that Curtis Peoples will want to get inside ultimately against Marshall. He's landing pretty well from the outside, but I think he'll want to be in there fighting off Marshall's chest. So far in this round, too, he's forgotten a little bit about that jab. It's been a closer round than round one. It's a counter right hand. He countered the left hand body shot of Marshall. You're right, though, when you say that Curtis Peoples has abandoned the jab a little bit. Oh, a big right hand, but again, the lack of power, perhaps. He's not, and Tony Marshall not turning it on. Marshall's been able to take the best that Peoples is offering in that overhand right and not get hurt with it because he's slapping with it a little bit. Oh, that was a good one. And what his trainer said, He's hesitating a little bit, not getting all his power into that part. Yeah, what his trainer told us this morning is that he, he hesitates just enough to allow his opponent to take that half step backwards, and thus it diminishes some of the power in the front. The counter shot there by people. This will be a very tough round to score. Him up. Get off him. Get off him. The fingers of uh, nice nice our punch profile people, Bob Kenobi and Logan Hudson, to work to the bone. Another right hand at the end of the round, and uh, just one shot like that can sometimes be the difference. The right hand misses by Peoples. There's the counter left by Marshall. It's a round I ended up giving to Curtis People by the narrowest of margins, Barry, but you can see that uh, this is going to be a very tough close fight. Yeah, and in Marshall's corner, as we look at the numbers from the second round, and again, Marshall throwing more punches, but Peoples throwing them more effectively. Almost identical numbers, incidentally, in the first two rounds for Curtis Peoples. Started to say that in Marshall's corner, they were telling him to get a little bit closer to him. His range was a little bit off which should play into people's hands. They traded right hands, Barry, and I, it's hard to tell who got the better of that. People's jab, really important. He cannot abandon that if he's going to do well this match. He 
know what though neither man has done as effectively as we've seen in the past throw combinations they haven't been putting their punches together quite as well as we've seen in the past Short right hand by Tony Marshall. Get off, get off of you. Right there, he was right not there. fighting much on the inside. I am really surprised at that. And really not using the jab nearly as much as he did in the first round. Now Marshall timing that jab and landing the right over it. Equal seems to be getting a little bit right hand happy. Yes, I agree 100%. And we saw an example of it right there. Now he comes back to the jab with three jabs. You saw that little uppercut by Marshall. Still get hasn't off, get gotten that. Both fighters connected. And now Tony Marshall throwing more combinations. And people's playing in his hands a little bit by staying straight up and on the outside. There's where I think he can do some better work on the inside. No hold it, no hold it. Break, step out. Left hand, both landed hard punches. But Marshall's was harder, and he landed some terrific, up, a good up cup of the right hand. But look at Peoples come back. You just got a good example of what Peoples does on occasion. He slapped with that right hand. Yeah. It landed right on the nose, but it was a slapping right hand. You might have seen in that little highlight package I showed you earlier a couple of people's punches were slaps. Marshall is at a better round, and it's because he's throwing better combinations. There's another slap. Marshall, we're going into his corner. Very good that time. All right, All right, go. 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 right hands to the body, okay? You're trying to load up now. Don't load up. You understand? Don't load up. Don't load up. That's embarrassing, bro. Look, hands up. Every time you come into him, throw the jab with a quick right hand. No, you understand? Need the jab work on the borderline with those punches. Now keep them up. Keep the jab work. Every time you crowd him, you gotta throw combinations because you only throw one shot. Nice. We don't pick the pace up on you, okay? You gotta throw combination. Go back to your jab, move your head. Every time you no, come, I was you talking about you need combination. Now. There is where Curtis Peoples Every doing a little slapping with his right hand. Right Got hand. tremendous advice in his corner. That's where Marshall came back. They wanted to come up with his hands up. Just keep using the jab when he's on the inside throw combinations. Couldn't be better advice in this corner if you can follow. Let's keep the punches up in there. Let's keep it. Nice. So we start the fourth round now. Very close fight. Just about what we anticipated. See Tony Marshall forging ahead. Still throwing more and in this case landing more. And they want him to be even busier. So will Peoples be able to get his jab going again in this round? And will he throw those combinations once he's on the inside? Peoples Peoples has not made a huge effort to get inside against Marshall. He stays outside the whole time in this spot. He'll be playing into Marshall's hands. Good body work by Peoples. I think that's important for him. You know, sometimes you're watching a boxer and you underestimate certain things he does. I think Tony Marshall's left hook is underestimated, and I think I've been guilty of that as well. He's really got a pretty strong left hook. When Peoples works the jab, he does much better. Marshall not quite as active in this round. Now, both men have been throwing fewer punches. It's interesting, Marshall, the stalker, and Curtis Peoples moving and dancing. 
which is contrary to the first couple of rounds. Yeah, and contrary to the way you would expect this bout to go. Curtis <laughs> Peoples a terrific amateur, as uh, was Marshall. He almost made the 1988 Olympic team lost in the trials to Charles Murray. Comes out of Palmer Park, Maryland. Another pretty fair fighter, as I recall, came out of Palmer Sugar Park. Sugar something. Yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard, of course. Keep him up in there. Keep the punches up. Both men throwing some low blows. This time it's Marshall. People have been warned in between rounds. This is a round that is there to be taken right now. If somebody could could come on with a rush. That's what they want from people. Right there. Activity inside. Both these fighters always seem to fight very close fights, and this one is no exception. People's uh, corner wants him get busy on the inside, and then at the end, the left hook landed. He didn't do enough of that, I don't think, in round four, but that's exactly what they want from him. Let's take a look at the total numbers in this fight. As you can see, Marshall now starting to creep up on Curtis Peoples after Peoples had a pretty commanding oh, lead in punches to the first two rounds. That makes for almost a dead even fight. Now remember, Marshall has thrown a lot more punches. Right, let him move, let him go. Let's keep it clean there. Keep him up. Both but conversely, Peoples has been the aggressor for the most part. Your card reflecting exactly what the fight has been. Very close. And it's what we expected, really. Uh, Marshall with a nice little uppercut. That's where Peoples needs to make something happen, I think. Pretty battle with a warning for uh, keeping the punches up to people, but Marshall's also been throwing some love blows. Neither fighter can afford to have a point taken away. I'm sure this fight is that close. Marshall makes better with that. It's three to one. Now stop punching. Curtis Peoples is making one very serious tactical mistake. Not working on the inside as much as he likes. Gets the hook in there. We were talking earlier that he may hesitate and allow his opponent to step back, but truth to tell, it looks to me like he's the one that's stepping back when he throws that punch. Could be, yeah. And, and he's also slapping with that right hand block. See, it's Marshall working better on the inside right now. And Marshall, the aggressor, also now. Where's that jab been of Curtis Peoples? You saw it a moment ago. It's been uh, not used very well by him. No, and it's a very good one. There's the uppercut by Marshall right there. And the combination. There's people slapping again with that left hand. The technique of Tony Marshall is better right now, and that's why he's starting to take a little control of this match. His punches are straighter, and he's throwing them with more leverage. That's the way you don't throw an, over an overhand right hand. No, no. Now, what's starting to happen here is Peoples is allowing Marshall to be the aggressor in this fight. It was a grazing right hand, even though it did draw cheers from the crowd. So again, a close round, but perhaps Marshall did a little bit more once more. And the bats. Well, people started out with a very effective jab, and in round five, just four of 22. Not the way to get it done for him. Here are the numbers in the fifth round. Again, Marshall throwing more punches as he has throughout the fight. People's been right around the 55 to 59 mark. I think it's a very pivotal round because you can easily make the case that one fighter is one point ahead of the other. I think Marshall probably is. And this round could tell a lot about how this fight goes. Still to come, of course, our main event, Tommy Morrison and Art Tucker. 
and this fight has been exactly as advertised so far. You've mentioned a couple of times the slapping of Curtis Peoples, and boy, it has really been evidence in the last three rounds. He really lands some big punches. You know, they, they, I don't, it's not that strong. I don't know if it's if this is one of the reasons or not. I'll ask you. You're the expert here. He has a tendency to keep his hands almost open, even when he's in a defensive yeah. posture. And I just wonder if he just can't get his fist close. Yeah, well, I think that's a, that's a good point. And then so you end up slapping with the punch. See, look at him right now with the right hand. As opposed to the way Tony Marshall holds his right. That's a very good point. See, on the inside, neither man working there, and it behooves Curtis people to, to work better on the inside. This is Martin with the left hand. It was the more effective, even though people has got there with the left of his own. Good short right hand on the inside. But that's a good example of a right that slaps by Curtis Peoples. Yeah, because Marshall was right there for it. Both those punches got there. There's another slapping right hand. Now they're landing, and that's good. It's scoring some points, but uh, not going to do the damage he would want. Counter right by Marshall over the, the left hook of people. Again, a pretty close round, but one in which it seems maybe Tony Marshall has done a little sharper punching. Still a very tough fight to score. Oh, very close. That was a good right hand by Marshall. Short one on the inside. So we come to the end of the sixth round. As you mentioned, a very pivotal round, and perhaps Tony Marshall did enough to win it. We'll be back. We start the seventh round now, and a little bit of desperation in Curtis People's corner. They told him, they said, this guy's stealing it from you. You've got to get in and be very busy. The total numbers, and they're starting to be a decided edge, certainly in punches thrown, but even in punches connected now well, by Marshall. And even though the edge is small in punches thrown, when you're throwing over 100 more, you have to feel that uh, you might get a nod from the judges. Still cold. Wow. That's about as hard as he could throw that right hand, and it still didn't seem to hurt Marshall. And Marshall came right back, didn't he? What he is doing, he's doing is loading up at that right hand, uh, telegraphing it much more than he did early in the fight. Good left hand. But see, it does nothing to Marshall. And you know, Curtis people was counting on the fact that he had harder than Marshall. It hasn't necessarily been so. Peoples might be a little bit tired. I think you're right there. And I think that it's part of the reason why he's not throwing too many combinations. Lands the one big punch and then pretty much stops. Another right hand. The overhand right is there for Peoples. It's been there for most of this match. And had he been continuing to use his jab, it would have been there even more. Marshall landing those little short punches on the inside. Another good right hand, but once again, Marshall doesn't so much as take a backward step. Not even a little bit, and that's because he's hitting with the open part of the glove. Now, it's going to count as a punch landing, and Peoples is making this a fairly close fight. That's where Peoples should grip that left hook to the body and head. Overhand right, any time Peoples feels like it, but it's just not not enough of them, really, although this is making this round closer. Right? No question, Peoples is getting to be a tired fighter. Now he's only got about three minutes and 40 seconds left. Get off him. Get off him. No, no, but I think if he's going to have a chance, he's got to win this and the next round. It's been a fairly close round, but boy, Marshall has landed. Another warning from the battle. He's seemingly on people's case. Get off him. 
Another very close round, very close round. All right, last round. We're going to go into Marshall's ball corner ball now. See how confident they are. Deep breath, nice slow deep breath. Let it all hang out. Now look at Tony. How you do, Tony? Tony, listen, listen. I'll up the trucks listen. You got, this is very close. You got to have this round. Now you got to stay on top of this guy. Come on, close the distance right. off. Come in behind the short. Last game. round, we touch gloves in the top. center. All right, on, baby. Tony, you got it. Dig down right, now. Don't. Dig down. Yeah. Gotta go all out all right. in this round. This round means just keep on Come working on. and then push the back. He's going around round over here, right? right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy told me. Curtis Peoples, now here he lands the right hand. Now, that's pretty good. But right back comes Marshall with a straighter right hand. From a different angle, you'll see how they land. Now, not a bad right by Peoples. But right away, here comes Marshall. The power of Peoples has not been more than Tony Marshall. On Marshall's corner, the feeling is that he does have to go out and get this round just to be sure. They feel it's a very close fight, and I think it could be. It could be. I would tend to think Marshall is ahead, but those rounds are very, very close. In the seventh round, now Marshall throwing twice the punches that Peoples threw. Landing about 15 more. You know, Curtis People has landed some pretty flashy punches, but uh, whether he's landed enough of them remains to be seen. On your card now, decided edge for Tony Marshall. All close rounds that he has won, so don't be shocked if those judges' scorecards are different than mine, if they're much closer. No knockdowns, and I don't believe either fighter has really been hurt in this fight. Marshall looks the fresher of the two. Here was another right hand right on the button, but Marshall didn't step backward. About the third round, Curtis People really stopped using his jab. Boy, it's been, it's been really been a problem for him. I think even more of those overhand rights would have bounced off the head of Marshall if he was using the jab. And remember, he won the first round primarily on jabs, Curtis. That's interesting how a fighter will just abandon something that's been working for him. Counter right hand by Peoples, but if it came, it came behind a right hand from Marshall, it was a little bit better punch. Another right hand, and again, Marshall keeps coming forward. And even when people throws a straighter right that gets there with more authority, Martin doesn't seem to do much to Marshall. Now, Rudy Battle has warned um, Peoples for low blows, thank you. He's the guy in the red. Peoples for low blows. But, you know, he hasn't warned Tony Marshall much for pushing down on people. With the uppercut that Marshall wanted to win. Look at that. That might merit a warning once in a while. Or a too late for a point deduction. Well, a gutsy performance by both men. You know what? They were almost too even, weren't they? Yeah, it's true. Good matchup, almost too even, just hard to... And I, I still think Marshall might have the edge in this bout, but... I think Marshall might have hurt people just yeah. a moment ago, actually. More than at any time in the fight. And they end it having at one another. Excellent fight. Not a good sportsmanship shown also by both men there. You have to like that. A lot of respect. You, I think uh, Curtis Peoples feels like he won this one. And um, I don't know that I totally agree. He gave a decent performance, a good performance, really, more than decent. But uh, I just wonder if he was busy enough, and I wonder if uh, Tony Marshall didn't land more. Things heating up at Indianapolis now. We've already had the qualifying for the pole position. These two awaiting 
the decision. Here are the numbers, and the numbers are, are pretty indisputable. Well, Tony Marshall built up in the last several rounds a big margin. We remind you again, of course, it depends on what rounds those punches were landed in. But I would have to think that would give Tony Marshall an edge in this match. But for that man, Curtis Peoples, nothing wrong with his performance. Just maybe didn't land quite enough. Well, taking a little bit of time to tabulate the scorecards, which always means a pretty close fight. fight. And we are just about set to go to those scorecards now, so let's get up to the center of the ring and the ring announcer for all the top-ranked fights here on ESPN. Michael Buffer. Michael? Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the official scoring, how about a round of applause for these two up-and-coming welterweights that put on a great show here. Here is the official scoring. John Riley scores about 77-75. He has it for Curtis Peoples. Rocky Castellani scores about 77-76 for Tony Marshall. And Frank J. Cairo scores the bout 76-76. It's a three-way split. The bout is a draw. Well, the judges saw it a draw. We thought it might be, it was close. Not surprising, to tell you the truth. Yeah. I'm really not surprised that it did wind up in a draw. Curtis Peoples and Tony Marshall. You have an idea we might see these two against each other again. Tommy Moore.